Let's also bring on board the management of uh, Rosari Biotech. We have with us Sunil Chari, the co-founder and MD joining in. Given the kind of pressure that they are facing on account of uh, the input costs actually rising, let's try and understand how exactly are they going about business. Sunil, hi, good morning. Good to have you on the show. We understand Very that input morning. material prices on an average have risen up by about almost 30.5% on a sequential basis. Uh, you have four key input raw materials as we understand surfactants, acetic acid, acrylic acid, as well as silicon oil. How is it that you're mitigating the impact of this spike? Uh, Rosari is an innovation-led company, and we have been very proactive, uh, you know, in uh, looking at what is the trends happening. Uh, but the last uh, few months uh, have been unprecedented, you know, in my entire 40 years uh, in working in the chemicals industry. Uh, besides the raw material actual increase in price, uh, the freight uh, and the shortages of supply of raw material has impacted much. Um, we acted proactively and uh, did acquisitions in silicones and surfactants uh, to secure our raw materials. And I am very happy to say that this quarter, uh, we have been at the forefront of supplying on time uh, to all our customers. Uh, raw materials uh, margins have been impacted. Uh, and this will impact our bottom line, like all other specialty chemical manufacturers. Uh, but we have been able to secure uh, raw metals in spite of this big energy uh, shortage. Sure. Also wanted to understand what the scope is of the Greenfield project that you have in the Hage. Um, by doubling its capacity, how is it that it's going to be contributing to the revenues going forward for you? Uh, as I said in the past, uh, Rosary is focused on fungible manufacturing capacity. So the DH facility, uh, like our Silvasa facility, has been very fungible, uh, you know, uh, designed uh, to go into any segments. Uh, the HPPC segment, uh, which is our largest segment, uh, we see a very good build-up of demand. And uh, we are very confident that, you know, we will complete uh, the total usage of the capacity in the next three years. How much of your products currently are pure IP producted, which is that your buyers will have to come to you because they are either cheap or they are innovative or they are giving better uh, output? As a company, we always focus on innovation and uh, being uh, customizable uh, uh, in terms of the requirement of the customers. So when you are customizable uh, and uh, products are made uh, as per the requirements of the customer, it is difficult for the customer to shift. Uh, besides, the customers are big, and uh, the input cost which goes uh, from our side is not very big. Uh, so, change of, of uh, products uh, to our customers is not so easy, and that is why uh, we have sticky customers, and we continue to go with every customer, uh, either with new products or increase in the consumption of existing products. Okay, uh, give me a sense on if raw material prices they come down, which they will because ultimately it's a commodity. Uh, do you start cutting back the prices? Do you start renegotiating prices? How does the maths work? Because suddenly there could be a situation where top line, which is a product of price inflation, can start contracting. But uh, we have had uh, increase in. Uh quantity of sales, so number, uh, kilos of sales we do every month, we have seen constant uptake in the last six months. Uh, so if you see, you know, quarter on quarter, uh, the growth has been very, very good uh, without considering price inflation. Uh, and we continuously churn out from our in R&D lab at IIT, a portfolio of products uh, which are there. Uh, we see disruption happening now. So in the previous interview, Dr. Goenka, he was talking about uh, disruption by you know, Ola uh, with the new electric vehicles. Uh, similarly, we understand and we work on who can disrupt us, what can disrupt, disrupt our customers, and we we be ready. Uh, the focus on sustainability, uh, focus on cutting on BOD, COD, TDS, uh, the amount of time which is involved in a particular process, catalyzing process to reduce temperature, uh, to reduce overheads, uh, to make processes faster, is has been our constant focus, and that is what keeps Rosari. Uh, on the top of the mind of its customers. Okay, 
Hi, Mr. Chari. This is Mubina as well joining in. You know, I just want to take forward that point on um, capacities and expansion. You spoke about the Greenfield project in the Hedge, but that's not all. You also have inorganic expansion plans. You made that 400 crore acquisition recently of Unitop Chemicals. Then you had more acquisitions, TriStar as well as Roma Chemicals. Just help us understand how exactly these acquisitions fit into the scheme of things. How do they add to you know your overall capacities, your product mix and volumes? Uh, our board was very clear that we do not want overlap of uh, production capacity or overlap of segments uh, where we service the customers. Uh, we do not want to buy market share. Uh, so if you see our uh, 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 acquisition of Unitop, uh, it is one of the biggest ethoxylation, one of the few propoxylation uh, companies in India. And this gives us backward integration into chemicals, uh, especially new uh, you know, uh, raw materials which we are developing in our lab. And uh, this gives also confidentiality. Uh, uh, Unitop also gives us access to agrochemical market, oil and gas market. And these are all where we could cross sell our products. Uh, I into is into personal care additives. And this opens up new customer segments for us, uh, new areas and new products which were not there before. Uh, in terms of Romac, it is again silicon. Uh, silicon is a good uh, you know, size ingredient in uh, personal care, but also in textiles, uh, in, in other industry segments. Uh, so this is something where uh, we are trying to develop products on our own, and we have taken capacities which are not there with us. Uh, in Thrasher, it is distillation. In Indrop, as I said, ethoxylation and propoxylation. And in Romac, it is more of silicon fluid, of block silicon manufacturing. Uh, these are segments which are going to grow well. Uh, uh, personal care and home care and the HVP segment has been a focus area for growth for us, uh, and this will continue to grow. Uh, all the acquisitions have been focused on HVP segment, uh, which was less than you know 15-20% a few years ago, and now would be more than 70% in the next uh, coming years. Mr. Shari, how much of your products, um, if you could talk to us about your sales mix, exports and uh, domestic sales, and how do the margins differ for both? Uh, exports uh, traditionally have been less than 10% of our sales in the past years, uh, but with the acquisition of Unitop and TriStar, uh, we are confident that our exports uh, would be higher of 15 or nearly 20% of our sales in the coming years. Uh, the margins in exports are better, uh, 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 especially you know uh, uh, in, in agro and even uh, in the textile segment would work, and the home and personal care also, the margins are better. Uh, than in the domestic markets. Okay, Salim, great to have you on the show. We'll let you go on that note. Good speaking with you as always.